How to create your own animated floating bubble sequence in DaVinci Resolve 17.4. Inside your project's edit window, go to Effects. Underneath Toolbox, select Generators and go to find 4 Color Gradient. Click and drag one of these filters to your edits timeline. We will first concentrate on making the water coloured background for our animation. With this new edit selected, go to Inspector and underneath Generator, double click on the box next to Upper Left Colour to open up the Select Colour window. For the top left side first, type in the following hexadecimal code into the HTML box. Hashtag 195EFF. Click OK. Go to the upper right colour box now. Type in the code hashtag 2CBCFF. Now down to the lower left colour. Hashtag 0000FF, which should already be there by default. And for the lower right colour, enter the code hashtag 0B8DFF. Return to Effects, underneath Toolbox, go to the Effects option and find Fusion Composition. Click and drag one of these edits to a video track directly above your four colour gradient, ensuring that both clips are parallel with one another. Using the Selection Mode tool, which you can also do by pressing A, you can manually change the length of these clips if you wish. By default, the length of the fusion composition and four color gradients will be five seconds of screen time. Right click on your new fusion composition clip and go to open in fusion page. We will first have a go at creating the bigger bubbles that will make up our animation. Inside your nodes panel, hold in shift and press space to open up the select tool window. Use the search box at the bottom to find the ellipse tool. Select this from the options and go to click on Add. With the Ellipse node selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls, reduce the width and height of your ellipse shape to 0.4. Click on your empty nodes grid, hold in Shift and press Space again, and go to Add Fast Noise. This new tool will enable us to add texture to the ellipse shape which we initially inserted. In order to connect the two together, select the grey box to the right of ellipse 1, click hold your mouse button down and drag your cursor to the blue arrow to the left of fast noise 1. To make a connection, select either the left or right view options which appears underneath the fast noise tool to see a preview of your bubble shape appear above your fusion timeline. With the fast noise node already selected, go to inspector and underneath noise, to reduce the blend between different colour shades, increase detail to 10. To make each colour in the gradient stand out more, increase contrast to 5. To reduce the intensity of the bright side and to also make the edges stand out more later on in our tutorial, we will reduce brightness here to minus 1. To reduce the amount of colours scattered across your bubble, reduce scale to 0.7. To have the brighter section of the bubble point upwards as it would do naturally with the sky and sunshine pointing down at this in the water, change angle to minus 270. Go to colour, with the type selected as 2 colour, double click on the black box next to colour 1, hashtag 54547F will be the hexadecimal code that we use here. To reduce the intensity of the whiter sections of your bubble slightly, go to colour 2 which is white and reduce the alpha value to 0.7. Return to your nodes grid, hold shift and press space and go to add a P emitter tool. This particular tool will disperse particles which will be formed using the ellipse and fast noise tools that we've already inserted into this project. With the P emitter node selected, go to inspector and underneath controls, to reduce the congestion of bubbles slightly that will appear on screen, change number from 10 to 0.75. To ensure that the bubbles don't disappear randomly as they rise up towards the top side of your frame, increase the lifespan to 150. Select velocity. To 
have the bigger bubbles shift up at a gentle speed. Increase velocity slightly to 0.008. Change angle to 90 so that the bubbles move in an upwards direction. To add slight differences to the paths that the bubbles flow in as they rise, increase angle variance slightly to 10 to avoid having too many bubbles shifting up in straight lines. In order to apply the texture effects to our particles that we previously set with the ellipse and fast noise tools, select style, change style from point to bitmap. You can now connect the fast noise tool in your node's grid to the P-emitter 1 node. With P-emitter still selected, go to size controls underneath style in inspector. To add variety to the appearance of the bubbles that appear in your animation, increase size variance slightly to 0.15. Now to ensure that the bubbles start rising from the bottom of the canvas. Select region, change region from sphere to line. The X offsets will determine the horizontal coordination of the line that the bubbles will emerge from. Y concerns the vertical coordination. In order to make the line that will provide the source for the bubbles stretch across the entire width of your video, set Start X offset to 0.5 and set End X offset to minus 0.5. You should see a line spread out on your preview window. In order to shift this down, change both start and end Y offsets to minus 0.34. Return to your nodes panel, ensure that P-emitter 1 is still selected, hold shift and press space, and go to add P-directional force. With this new node selected, go to inspector and underneath controls to apply a gentle push to your bubbles from below so that they rise at a relaxed speed, change strength to 0.01. To have the bubbles float slightly towards the top left corner, I will change direction to 103. Return to your node's grid, ensure that P directional force one is selected, hold and shift and press space again, and go to add a P render tool, which will enable DaVinci Resolve to process your bubble animation. With the P-Render1 node still selected, hold Shift and press Space again. And go to add a Grid Warp tool. Change to Full Viewer above your Fusion Timeline. Change the Zoom settings from Fit to 25%. So that we can see the entire grid which fills up our video canvas. Underneath Inspector and Controls for this Grid Warp tool, first change Size to 1.1 so that the edges of the grid stretch beyond the video canvas. If these edges appear within the canvas itself, the bubbles will end up being cut off before they reach the edge of your video frame. With the Modify Only tool selected, which you can also do by holding in Shift and pressing M, select the tiny nodes that appear on the grid where the lines cross, click and drag your mouse cursor across slowly, sideways, diagonally or vertically, with various positions applied so that a morph effect is applied to the bubbles as they rise. Ensure that you only make minor adjustments to the position of these nodes to avoid any abrupt movement of your floating bubbles. With grid warp still selected, hold and shift and press space again and go to add a soft glow tool. This tool will add a gentle vibrance within and around each of your bubbles. Under Inspector and Controls for Soft Glow, reduce Gain to 0.2 to reduce the glow intensity. And to spread the glow slightly out more, increase Glow Size from 10 to 20. With Soft Glow 1 selected on your Nodes Grid, hold Shift and press Space again. Go to Add Edge Detect. With this new node selected, under Inspector and Controls, change Denoise Strength to 0.25 which should help the circular shape stand out more for each of your bubbles. Deselect Edge Detect 1 by clicking anywhere in the empty section on your node's grid. Hold Shift and press Space and go to select a Merge tool. Ensure that Edge Detect is connected to the green foreground arrow alongside Merge 1 so that these big bubbles will appear in front of the smaller ones that we will create later on in this tutorial. 
Connect merge one to media out one. Ensure that any of your nodes beyond P render are deselected. Hold in control or command if you are a Mac user and select all nodes that form part of your tool chain from ellipse one all the way up to P render one. Hold in control and press C to copy. Deselect your nodes. Hold in control and press V to paste. We will now focus on creating the smaller bubbles that will appear in the background. Connect the duplicate P render tool to the yellow background arrow which appears alongside merge one to make a connection. Deselect your highlighted nodes. Select ellipse one. Go to inspector. Change width and height to 0.1. Now select the duplicate P directional force node. Under inspector and controls, increase the strength to 0.03 to have these smaller and lighter bubbles shift upwards faster. Return to your edit window. Ensure that the fusion composition clip is selected. Underneath inspector and video, scroll down to composite and reduce opacity to 35 to make the bubbles blend into your water background more. The background music for this tutorial is provided by the Proud Channel sponsor Audio, a link to the company's website and another link which will enable you to make a discounted purchase of a lifetime supply of music and sound effects can be found in this video's description box. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.